श्री अशोक गहलोत जी श्री भारत सिंह सोलंकी जी श्री भार्गव ठाकर श्री सिद्धार्थ पटेल श्री जीतू पटवारी जी श्री शक्ति सिंह गोहिल जी लीडर्स ऑन द स्टेज डिस्टिंग्विश्ड लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी बैक इन गुजरात विच हैज प्रोड्यूस्ड India's most extraordinary sons Mahatma Gandhi and Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel I am also happy to be in your midst who are renowned all over the world for your business and enterprise I am also happy to be with this state where one of my daughters obtained a degree at irma in anand but i must state that i also speak with a heavy heart i start my address by invoking the memory of more than a hundred people who lost their lives last year in the wake of the demonetization tomorrow will mark exactly one year since the disastrous policy of demonetization was thrust on the people of our country i say it with immense pain and a sense of deep responsibility that the 8th of november was a black day for our economy and indeed for our democracy I remember feeling shocked when I heard the prime minister's announcement and I wondered who advised him to inflict such a reckless step on our nation and whether any considered thought went into it My dear friends and fellow countrymen black money and tax evasion or a menace that the country needs to tackle but demonetization was clearly not the solution it has been suggested many times in the past as one of the methods to eradicate black money but as a responsible government we never took such a drastic measure because in our recent analysis the costs of demonetization always exceeded the benefits very substantially one must also remember that nowhere in the world has any democracy undertaken such a coercive move with trying 86% of the legal tender in one single sue neither would anyone advise to bring out an even more high valued currency note of rupees 2000 after it validating 500 and 1000 rupee notes we know by now that none of the stated objectives of eliminating black money terror financing and counterfeit currency have been met to promote a less cash economy coercive steps like demonetization are ineffective the cash in circulation after one year is close to 90% of the previous level the fact that more than 99% of the demonetized currency came back into the banking system has punctured the government's claims there are also wide spread reports of the rich converting their black money into white 
while the poor have undergone immense suffering. Demonetization has proved to be mere bluster to reap political dividends while the real offenders have escaped. I repeat, as I stated in Parliament, this was organized loot and legalized plunder. We saw the impact of demonetization on the economy when the GDP growth rate dropped to 5.7 percent under the new calculation. Even this is bound to be a gross underestimate as the pain of the informal sector is not adequately captured in the calculation of the GDP. Every 1% loss of GDP growth rate annually costs our nation 1.5 lakh crore rupees. Think of the human impact from this lost growth, the lost jobs, the youth whose opportunities have vanished, the businesses who had to shut down, and the entrepreneurs whose drive to succeed has turned into discouraged disappointment. What is even more tragic is none of the lessons from this monumental blunder have been learned by the Modi government. Instead of providing relief, as I had requested in Parliament, to the poor and the marginalized, farmers, traders, and the small and medium businesses who suffered the brunt of demonetization the government chose to inflict on them a badly designed and hastily implemented GST. This twin blow is a complete disaster for our economy. It has broken the back of small and medium enterprises in India. In the textile hub of Surat alone, 60,000 looms have been discarded since July. At the rate of 35 jobs lost for every 100 looms shut, and an estimate of 21,000 jobs have been lost in just one industrial sector in Surat. The impact in the rest of the country is equally bad, if not worse. The supply chains and credit lines of our MSME sector and industrial clusters have been greatly affected, hampering production. You are aware of the damage done to the ceramics sector in Morvi and the industries in Wapi and Rajko. Overall, as our domestic sector is not able to cope with demand, China is benefited from this situation. In the first half of fiscal year 2016-17, India's imports from China stood at rupees 1.96 lakh crore. Bringing the same period, during the same period in fiscal 2017-18, the imports from China increased to rupees 2.41 lakh crores. This unprecedented increase of imports by more than rupees 45,000 crores, which is a 23% increase in a year can be attributed largely to demonetization and the GST. These twin blows damaged India's medium and small manufacturing sector and our businesses had to run to Chinese imports at the cost of Indian jobs. The goods and services tax as envisaged, as envisaged in our government's own thinking, 
was supposed to simplify taxation in the country with a single tax capped at 18% to make life easier for our businessmen both big and small the current gst is a great departure from that vision it has transformed into a complicated mess with multiple slabs and rates as high as 28% along with additional cesses this was done by the government without paying any heed to our advice both in parliament and in private consultations compliance requirements under the gst have become a nightmare for small businesses the unending notifications and changes a repeat of the chaos of demonetization have caused needless and endless confusion along with demonetization gst has sown a deep rooted fear of tax terrorism among the business community at a time when the economy has slowed down considerably despite favorable global macroeconomic condition the fear of tax terrorism has eroded the confidence of indian business to invest as you know the growth in private investment is at a 25 years low this is terrible for growth of india's economy my dear friends good governance involves both the head and the heart it pains me to say that the union government has completely failed to do its duty on both fronts let me explain through the example of two of the greatest gujaratis the world has seen the mahatma who represents the heart and soul of our nation gave, gave us a talisman he said and i quote whenever you are in doubt apply the following test recall the face of the poorest and the weakest man whom you may have seen and ask yourself if the step you contemplate is going to be of any use to him will he gain anything by it will it restore him to a control over his own life and destiny in other words will it lead to swaraj for the hungry and spiritually starving millions did i ask the prime minister stop to consider the wisdom of the mahatma when asking the reserve bank governor to sign on the dotted line or while implementing the gst in utter haste did he think about the impact on those who toil in the informal sector whose earnings have dried up because of a shortage of cash did he think about the millions of people who lost their jobs and had to return to their villages in despair if the prime minister had paid he attention to mahatma gandhi's talisman the poor of india would not have suffered the way they did ladies and gentlemen you know that i have seen crippling poverty while growing up in another sub, si, other side of punjab before partition i have also seen the significant strides our great nation has taken in my lifetime building on the foundations laid by congress governments from pandit nehru to shastri ji to indira ji rajiv ji narsim rao ji to vajpayee ji i can proudly say that when i was prime minister we lifted 140 million people out of poverty 
the task no other democracy in the world has achieved in a period of 10 years. Yet, one in two Indians still remain vulnerable, and one blow can make them fall back into poverty. Demonetization and the GST were two blows that have probably pushed millions back into terrible hardship. So they had to turn to the social safety nets provided by the Manrega brought in by the UPA government. The other great Gujarati who is an inspiration to all of us is the great Sardar Vallabhai Patel. He was the force behind uniting India from 565 disparate princely states to one united glorious nation. When undertaking the endeavor of one nation, one text, if the Prime Minister had taken inspiration from the resolve and attention to detail of great Sadar Patel, the outcome today would have been very different. Bravado and drama are poor substitutes for courage with conviction and the ability to execute well. When we passed the nuclear deal in the UPA, one, the intelligence and idealism of Pandit Nehru, Sardar Patel and Indraji were our guiding lights in our endeavor to end the nuclear apartheid of India and ensure